Welcome to Time of Death. This video is for informational purposes and in no way meant to glorify or condone violence. In today's video, we'll be discussing the murder of Annie Margaret Bell. Bell was stabbed to death Sunday, June 18, 2015 in the 44600 block of Stillwater Drive at Lancaster, according to LA County Coroner Records. Tony Donnell Brown was subsequently arrested and charged with the murder. The following is the evidence at his juvenile fitness hearing. Tony B was born in December 2000. According to a probation officer's report, when he was 14 years, six months old and a runaway, Tony B selected a house to burglarize in a neighborhood he frequented. He chose the house based on the fact that its occupant was an 86-year-old wheelchair-bound woman, Annie Bell, who lived alone. At 1.30 a.m. on June 18, 2015, Tony B. entered the backyard of the house, removed the screen from the bedroom window, and reached in to take the woman's purse from her dresser. He then went to the front of the house and entered through another unlocked window. Once in the house, Tony B. first went to the kitchen and armed himself with a knife reportedly because he thought someone besides the woman might be present. According to Tony B, as he moved through the house, he caused a noise that woke the woman, who first questioned who was there and then began screaming. Tony B proceeded to the woman's bedroom and stabbed her 41 times with her knife to silence her. The woman was killed, never having left her bed. After the murder, Tony B left the house and waited nearby. When no one responded to the screams, he re-entered the house and completed the burglary. Later that day, Tony B stood in the crowd watching as police investigated a report from Annie Bell's neighbor that something was wrong. A bystander alerted police that a young man in the crowd seemed to have knowledge of the incident and was acting suspiciously. Additionally, police interviewed a witness who had overheard Tony B tell the witness's cousin that he stabbed the victim, stating that he and the victim had scared each other. Tony B was further heard threatening to come back for the cousin if the cousin told. The witness later identified Tony B as the person who had admitted to the murder. Indeed, when Tony B was contacted by officers, he had the woman's laptop computer in his possession and bloodstains on his shorts. After his arrest, Tony B made a statement to police. He reportedly began by giving a false name and birth date, denied any knowledge of the crime, and offered a false alibi. When confronted with the fact that there was blood on his shorts and that a witness had reported his statements admitting the crime, Tony B acknowledged committing the murder and provided his true identity, but minimized the violence. Interviews of additional witnesses confirmed that Tony B had admitted the murder. The defense responded by submitting numerous documents regarding Tony B's background. Early Department of Children and Family Services reports show that Tony B was born with cocaine in his system. His father's whereabouts were unknown and his mother was incapable of providing for him. Accordingly, DCFS placed Tony B with a cousin and later with two sets of foster parents. Because those parties did not provide him with adequate care, Tony B was placed at age two with a woman who would become his adoptive mother and who thereafter provided him and his older brother with what social workers described as a happy home. Defense experts in neurology and neuropsychology testified that Tony B suffered from brain disease, particularly frontal lobe syndrome, as a result of his in utero exposure to cocaine. This they concluded led to poor impulse control, disinhibition, and severe ADHD that interfered with Tony B's ability to process complex tasks. While they detected pronounced deficiencies in some areas of Tony B's mental functioning, the experts did not consider him to be mentally retarded or to have a developmental disability, and acknowledged he could perceive right from wrong. After weighing in all of the evidence, the juvenile court found that Tony B was not likely to be successfully treated in the juvenile system and that transfer of his case to the criminal court was appropriate. In a statement of reasoning, the court first found that Tony B exhibited a high degree of criminal sophistication in committing an extremely grave offense. Without the influence of anger, peer pressure, or other stressors, Tony B had carefully selected a vulnerable victim, planned the burglary, and once underway, returned to the scene repeatedly to carry out his objective. No criminal court proceedings were available for this case. Annie Margaret Bell was 86 years old at the time of death. 